Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So I had a couple requests to do this video, um, which is swatching out all the transparent oxide colors. I'll be using Daniel Smith's version today. So we have transparent yellow oxide made with PY42, transparent red oxide made with PY PR101, transparent brown oxide made with PR101 as well. And that little circle there is just to show you that it's that Daniel Smith denotes it as being transparent. And after swatching these out, I just wanted to compare them with raw sienna, burnt sienna, and burnt umber, which is like, you know, your typical trio of earth colors where you have raw sienna being the yellow earth, burnt sienna being the red earth, and burnt umber being the, the blue earth color. And I wasn't sure what my viewers wanted to see in this swatching, so that's why I have this comparison to show you because I feel like maybe a lot of beginners as well might be wondering like other than raw sienna, burnt sienna, and burnt umber, what colors can I use? So I think this might be helpful in showing you whether or not these may interest you in being substitutes in your palettes. And with these ones, they're all with this, these circles. Um, Daniel Smith denotes it as, I guess that's semi-opaque, I believe. So yeah, um, let's get straight in, shall we? Straight into swatching. Now I've pre-wetted these, so then we don't have to be worried about scrubbing and whatnot. But then again, Daniel Smith doesn't really need pre-wetting. Today I'll be using this brush by Rosemary & Co. I believe it's their Golden Synthetic line, if I remember correctly. So here we have the transparent yellow oxide. Beautiful color. I've drawn the line there to possibly help help us take a look at whether or not these are truly transparent as their name suggests. So far so good. I'm seeing a bit of deposit there on the line. But from this part onwards, it doesn't seem to be that, it doesn't seem to cover the line at all. But we'll wait to see once it dries, whether or not it'll, you know, dry completely transparent. I think I'll zoom in a bit some more. Okay. Next we have transparent red oxide. One, two, three, four. Beautiful, beautiful. I think I may have picked up too much pigment there. Nevertheless, it's a beautiful color. Transparent, very strong. Quite similar to quinacridones. Wow, that's very beautiful. I love the granulation. I think um, from my swatches that I've done in the past, I believe transparent red oxide tends to granulate more than burnt sienna. Speaking only about Daniel Smith right now. Okay, next we have transparent brown oxide. I love this transparent brown oxide color because I've never seen granulation like it before. And it's also a very nice chocolatey color. See, isn't that beautiful? Love that. So beautiful, look at that granulation coming through. That's amazing. And I love how transparent brown oxide is almost two-tone in its granulation. Like right there, you could sort of see a like a red orangey underbase, and some of the granulation is like a darker 
darker granulation color, like the particles seem darker. So beautiful. Okay, with that, I'll, I'll, I'll continue swatching these down here. I think I've done these swatches close up before, so I'm gonna do this zoomed out so then we could see as we go along. All right, now we have raw sienna. I just want to quickly point out that all of these colors, all six of these on the page here, on the screen, they're all series one in Daniel Smith's brand. And I think that makes it easier for when you're deciding whether you want to change into a different option. I'm not exactly sure if I've done a raw sienna and transparent yellow oxide comparison, but I have similar videos up, so I'll link them below should you be interested. <coughs> and now we have burnt sienna, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is Daniel Smith's Burnt Sienna. So with these ones, I want to see if they'll be more opaque than the transparent ones on this side. Since Daniel Smith does say that it's semi-opaque. So far, I am seeing some deposits as well up here, but diluted, not so much. All right, burnt umber, two, four, five, six, two, four, five, six. Burnt umber is also a nice chocolatey color. Um, it's a bit more blue compared to transparent brown oxide. but it's not too bad. Okay, and I'll leave those to dry completely and then we'll come back and take a look at how they're different and how they're similar. So far, so good, don't you think? All right, I'm back. The swatches have completely dried. This one as well as this one and I'm very intrigued. They did, all of them did dry pretty transparent. Let's see if I could show you up close. There's hardly any deposit that I could see at all. With this one, as well as the red oxide. With the red oxide and the transparent brown oxide, it's a bit difficult to tell because, you know, they're already a dark color. But from what I could see, it's definitely transparent, much more so than um, the triad underneath. On their own, they really do look like, like, let's see, if I didn't tell you that these were transparent oxide colors, would you have known? I mean, okay, for those of you who know of Daniel Smith's colors, then you might already be able to tell, but I mean, if you just gave me these swatches, I would have been like, hey, this looks like a raw sienna yellow ochre. This, mm, I say this doesn't look like a burnt sienna as it leans more red, but if you gave me these, I'm gonna say it's raw sienna, burnt sienna, and burnt umber, definitely. And I love that like you can get these dark, super dark, dark in mass tone. And I think that's the beauty of transparent oxides is that because they're transparent, you could layer them and get these really dark mass tones. And as for the granulation, I noticed that they have this like, these weird bits of granulation. Like, is it just me or is it with this brown oxide as well? It looks almost like PBR11, you know, how they they granulate and then the particles separate. 
Transparent red oxide, not so much. I'm not seeing any of that happening with the transparent red oxide. But the granulation there is beautiful. I love their granulation. It's just, it's it's on another level. It's not the, it, I'm going to use this word again. And that's because I think Daniel Smith's granulation is usually like this. And the granulation is like rocky, spiky, you know? Whereas compared to these ones down here, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and burnt umber, raw sienna almost looks like it's not even granulating as well as burnt sienna. But burnt sienna does have granulation, as you can see there. And burnt umber has, it seems like it has the most granulation out of these three. But as you can see, it's not two-tone at all. It just looks like normal, a normal granulating color like any other brand. Whereas the one up here, it's very two-tony in that there's like that burnt umber color underneath and the granulation is like a darker, sometimes red, sometimes more brown. And that's just, that's just so beautiful. I love that. So apart from these six colors here, Daniel Smith actually offers another set. Well, not it's not that they have it in a set, but the colors are there in their range and we can group them into sets like these. And that's the environmental friendly yellow iron oxide, environmental friendly red iron oxide, and brown iron oxide, I believe. And they're all environmental friendly. However, these here, are all series one but those environmental friendly ones are made with pbr6 i believe i'll put them up here on the screen and they're series two so these are cheaper if you generally buy daniel smith already after having done these swatches and this comparison i am actually interested in those environmental friendly versions because it's a different pigment. I mean, we don't really see PBR6 so often, don't we? I believe PBR6 is usually used for Mars Brown. I have one from White Nights, and that's a bit difficult to re-wet, and it's also quite low tinting, so I haven't really been a fan of PBR6. However, Daniel Smith is really good at their formula, so I'm, I'm actually interested to know, like, do any of you guys use the environmental friendly versions? I mean, they might not be versions of these, but I think they might be comparable, and that'd be interesting to know how they differ from these two sets. Because like I said, these all come out pretty transparent, whereas this raw sienna, you could definitely tell that there's like some deposit there. I wouldn't say it's semi-opaque, but I'd, I'd say I'd categorize raw sienna as like semi-transparent as well as the raw sienna and raw umber is a bit difficult to tell but I think I'm seeing some deposit there not as much as the raw sienna and burnt sienna though so yeah and I'll put the scans of these right after this so if you're interested to look at those then do stay and watch that but other than that, I hope this video was helpful. This comparison was what you expected to see. If there's any other questions I could answer, then please let me know down below and I'll do my best. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.